What's going on, guys? Brian Jackson, Men's Comics, and we are here to close out that comic book week once again with, of course, the last call. That's right. These are our picks for comics that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. If you're everyone else, a little bit earlier, if you're DC Comics. But, Jack, it's been a good week. It's been a great week for comic books, hasn't it? Yeah, big time week. This is a week we definitely had marked off in our calendars for quite some time. Uh, so it's nice to be kind of winding down because it, it, it's certainly been action-packed. Right. Some of those books that came out this week, they're doing hot in the secondary market. You never know what might be hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday that you can get those pre-orders in now. Get a discount. That way you're not chasing them after release day. We're getting into it right now, starting with that one from IDW. And we got the Usagi Yohembo, Wanderer's Road number one. Yeah, the Usagi has seen a, a renewed interest in the past year. Um, you know, with the move to IDW, it has certainly helped uh, it, the relaunch. And then on top of it, uh, the, the recent news that there is going to be uh, an animated adaptation on Netflix um, has certainly really re sparked interest in the property. Couple that with the fact that there's been some real timely IDW Peach Momoko covers, including a cover A for this book here, um, which is, uh, you know, again, timely being that Peach is obviously A, the hottest artist in the world, and then B is about to sign or has already signed an agreement to go to Marvel exclusively, um, limiting the amount of time that publishers have to get these kind of covers out there. So free Peach Momoko diehards, this is one to be on the lookout for. Here we have from Marvel, probably the biggest title on this week's FOC, and that's that big Donny Cates Marvel event, and we got that King in Black number one. Oh, yeah, there is no doubt that this is the biggest book uh, on the list this week. This is the big Marvel event that I think uh, we're going to be talking about for the next several months. Certainly, there's going to be tie-ins. There's going to be uh, crossovers, one-shots, all of that. We're going to be talking about it on all of the programs on Simple Men's Comics. Null has been one of the hottest characters created in the last several years, and Donny Cates' Venom run has really revolutionized things as far as Venom is concerned, and really everything in the symbiote family. So this is a big, big, big event because this is really going to give us the gravitas of the situation. Um, this is, again, it, it is going to be something too big for Venom. It's going to pull in the entire Marvel Universe. We're going to see Avengers get involved. And it's very cool to see, uh, especially, I know, for like diehard symbiote fans, who have been a, uh, really fans of the, these kind of properties and specifically, you know, Venom uh, for a long time to get the opportunity now to see this on this kind of a grand scale. Now you're talking variants. Certainly there's going to be variants for this one. Obviously a lot of, a lot of incentives as well as a lot of retailer exclusives. Um, but I expect it to be like absolute carnage where it'll deliver on all fronts from the variant front um, to the exclusive front to the reader buzz which of course is the most important so whether or not you're picking one up for for collecting reasons uh speculating reasons or just to read it's a great great idea to get those orders in pre-foc and make sure you're locked in for a copy of king and black yeah another thing about foc check with your lcs check with online we jack just mentioned there's a crap load of covers just from marvel plus there's going to be a crap load of store exclusives as well sometimes with all those marvel covers LCSs do offer a bundle you might be able to get for cheaper as well if you're one of those people that are interested in collecting all the covers available. Keeping with Marvel and keeping with a little bit of no, we get that no Marvel Tales number one. Yeah, and our Marvel Tales were books that um, we've talked about with the high cover price, the high buy-in, um, that the 1 in 50 virgin incentives were very, very attractive um, for resellers. Um, but we often did the math on the show and showed that, you know, just the cost of buying the regular books to qualify for those incentives weren't really going to make this profitable. This is one that I, I wonder if it doesn't throw it out the window because, the popularity of Null is, 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 is different because not only is he extremely popular, not only is he timely coming that we're going into King and Black, but also Null is a more modern character. There's less Null out there. There's that, less that's Null one thing high that ratio incentives. came to my attention is most of these Marvel tales we've been seeing is reprinting stories of that have that 
you know, that history where Knowles kind of knew within the past, what, 2011, 2012? Right. And well, and then that's the other issue is reprinting the stories. Uh, we've talked frequently about the fact that it seems like Marvel Tales, they, they were picking the wrong stories to reprint. Um, and then on top of it, so many of these classic, classic issues have been reprinted so many times. When you look at something like Null's first appearance, every printing of that book is valuable. Yes, so this we've also talked about those reprinted stories a lot of times. They see, tend to save those for the uh, true believers or other type of right. Reprinted. And here you're going to get another. You're going to get another uh, first appearance, essentially another printing of that. Um, and I think that that adds some value. So I like this one better than I've liked most of the uh, Marvel tales that we've seen released. Yeah, probably one of the most popular right now too. Keeping with Marvel for a second, we're getting over into that outlaw. We're also getting over two characters that are no stranger to Marvel Comics, but we're talking about Power Pack with a new Power Pack number one. Yeah, I know we've talked before about the fact that you know, sometimes you get the response of like, why does Marvel do series like Power Pack that seemingly nobody would want? Um, and, and that's no disrespect to Power Pack. It's just that's a group that has kind of seen its time, um, didn't really catch on. There's a lot of groups in comics, um, but there's actually some logic behind this. First off, we've talked about the fact that Marvel as a company, they've got to use trademarks. It's kind of a use it or lose it sort of system. So if you don't use it within a certain time period, that trademark goes in the open market. And the last thing you want to see is all of a sudden DC decide, yeah, you know what? Power Pack would look great in future state. So they go ahead and grab up that trademark. And that literally can happen and has happened in the past um, where I, specifically Image Comics has grabbed properties that were previously Marvel or DC. So that's one of those things you want to kind of watch out for. So that's number one. Number two, you mentioned the key phrase, outlaw. That is what gives this book really relevance. We were just talking about a power pack, number one. Um, I re even one in 100 incentive, they can pack this thing with a one in 10,000 incentive. There's nothing that's going to really incentivize me to get excited about power pack. And that's just being honest. That's just keeping it 100 with our audience. But what gets me excited about this release is the tie into Outlaw. We've been talking about Outlaw from Book of the One Shot. Look what that's doing right now. From Variant to the regular book. Look at what Champions is doing. Look at look at what the tie-in, the crossovers are doing. Look at what uh, Miss Marvel. Uh, all of that is doing well in the secondary market. All of it is seeing interest from readers. And because of that, I think that Power Pack, which is going to get, even though it's a number one, right? A Marvel number one. But if we were talking 2014, every Marvel number one was doing a big number. Um, those days have gone. So even though this is a number one, we don't see exclusive variants getting announced for this book. Uh, I think that the print run will be smaller. I think the high ratio variants on this book will be more limited than kind of typical Marvel number ones. So for all of those reasons, I I'm not going and putting a strong bolo out on this, but I'm saying I'm paying attention to it. And I think you should too. Yeah, there is a one in 100 hidden gem variant for this. Just like the previous pick, we got another pick here. That's another team, but this time from the UK. <laughs> this time they're from the UK, and we get the Union number one, which is also a tie into the King in Black. Yeah, yeah, and then you know Marvel had this big announcement that the Brits are coming, and we certainly see that now. Brian, you and I have been skeptical about this whole Captain Britain craze, and everybody's moved to really kind of want to kind of jump on this UK. Uh, section of the Marvel Universe. And, and again, and it's not that I don't see uh, value in it. Certainly, we've talked about the move to Asia and the popularity there. Um, I, I certainly could see potential in the UK. It just it seems all rushed and forced. I wonder if it isn't, it isn't more of that trademark thing that we're talking about. And the saving grace for this is very similar to Outlaw. This is a tie-in to King of Black. I don't know if that's as strong or as limited a tie-in because there's going to be so many of those. But I know that the, the, the uh, Union story is going to play into that. Obviously, it also has a strong presence in X-Men. It also looks like there's going to be some new characters created within this series. So there's going to be first appearances, and that's always going to get people interested. Now, if they do end up getting real, real heavy into uh, the UK section of the Marvel Universe, 
in the future of the MCU, like a lot of people are speculating and certainly is plausible, then certainly long term, some of these books could have some value. But I, I think that's all going to be a big, a big what if. Yeah, but I think even if they do go that way in the MCU, how long is that going to be sustained? Because I don't see too many people caring right now just because it's getting talked about again or be being reintroduced to these people. Is, is it going to be sustainable? Either way, I, I'm picking it up and reading it just because I'm interested in King and Black for sure. Yeah, we have a book from DC this week, and we get that Dark Knight's Death Metal Multiverse Who Laughs number one. This has the regular cover, but there's also a 1 in 25 Simone Bianchi variant for this too. Yeah, incredible variant, and I, I certainly think that that 1 in 25 is going to have some legs, especially with a 5.99 cover price book. But also, you can't really sleep on these one-shots. Uh, you know, the Robin King one-shot did very well, but look what just happened in the one-shot that just released this week, where we've got possible marvel crossovers teases um to kind of follow up on some of that donny kate stuff that is incredibly interesting to me um i just i think you never really know uh where the future of this kind of dark knights metal where this could all be going where scott snyder's kind of planning it so because of that you kind of got to pay attention to the, this these uh one shots and, and they've shown that like some of the most intriguing things to collectors haven't necessarily come in that main one through six con so we've gone over some great picks right now but we also have that indie showcase to get into which is going to happen right now indie showcase of course is brought to you by black cape comics at blackcapecomics.com pre-order all the books we talk about in this show at blackcapecomics.com as well as the indie book for the showcase this week we got another vault book i'm super excited to read this one and it is i walk with monsters number one yeah, this is a really, really big release for Vault Comics. And I think it's it. we talked about a lot of Vault releases recently and about kind of their resurgence in the secondary market. Their comics recently have been selling out at the first market, at retailers, selling out at distributor level, hitting second prints, and a lot of them are very, very, very popular. Um, you know, and this one, not only are we going to get another highly anticipated release, we're going to get something that's different from, from Vault Comics. First off, we're seeing a heavyweight cover artist being brought in. And that's not a disrespect to the amazing, and I mean amazing, that can't be undersold, cover art that Vault has put out. Vault has done more with some of the most up-and-coming artists, some of the most awesome artists. And they haven't really like had that move of going out and getting, say, a, a, a or B list artist that can kind of draw people in. But... This release has Mirka Undolfo involved in it, which is certainly, um, that's something new for Vault. Also, there is incentives for this book with a 1 in 15 and a 1 in 30, uh, as well as a 1 per store. And I think that that is going to get a lot of people's attention. Um, could increase some orders, uh, but I, it really shows that Vault believes in this release. We've seen this, we've experienced this with publishers. When they do this, because they think they've got one. So uh, my tend my tend to believe it with these kind of situations is follow the money. So if they're willing to put money into a big time cover artist, into incentives, which remember the publisher gives away to retailers for free. So this is books that they're printing. They're paying for art. They're paying for printing costs. They're paying for shipping, and they're giving that away free. Uh, so the fact that they're investing in that on top of the the big name cover artists, me shows they believe in the series and if they believe in it so much i think i should too so this is one to be on the lookout for whether or not you hit up black cape comics for your local lcs that is up to you but i absolutely recommend black cape comics they are an amazing online store blackcapecomics.com they've got their own exclusives they ship in those amazing uh gemini tank mailers keep your books safe in the mail and if you order before the foc cutoff you get a 15 percent discount you cannot beat all of that in one place Yes, just last week we talked about their exclusive they had for Something's Killing Children number 12, which is sold out. And we also talked about their Venom number 30, that awesome Mike Miyahi variant. They're almost sold out of that, but if they still have a few copies, so you can go there and pre-order at blackcapecomics.com. But like we always do at the end of these videos, we have some additional printings, but we also have something else to talk about too, right, Jack? 
That's right, because this is a very special edition of The Last Call. And last year, uh, when we really kicked off Last Call, one of the kind of big shows that we talked about is the local comic shop day show. And this year is no different. This is a special local comic shop day edition of The Last Call. But this year, I got to say, Brian, some impressive, impressive offerings from local comic shop day. But we are like you mentioned, we are going to get started with the late printings as we do every week. And Marvel, of course, represented with these late printings. Excalibur number 13 comes with a second print. X-Men number 12 comes with a third print. Uh, Champions number one comes with a second print of the most recent volume. And then we have Warhammer 40K coming with a uh, new number one second print. And Madam Satan with a uh, number one with a second print from Archie Comics. Now, on to those local comic shop day variants. And there are some ones that are definitely going to get some people's attention. And we start off with Ice Cream Man number 20, a brand new homage parody uh, available for local comic shop day. Something's Killing in the Children number one is being reprinted for local comic shop day with a very special foil cover that is certainly uh, sure to be probably the most paid attention to release on this list. Um, X of Swords Destruction number one drops a local comic shop day variant. Spawn number 312 has a local comic shop day variant. Those Spawn variants always do well. Invincible number one gets a gold foil variant uh, re-released right in time for the brand new animated series to debut on Amazon. Uh, Power Rangers number one gets a variant uh, to commemorate the re-release of the Power Rangers series. And this variant features the Pichuamoko variant art that is uh, featured in the incentive variants. So that's one to be on the lookout for. Other History of the DC Universe, a book that we've talked about here on the last call show that goes into the amazing stories from the perspective of the characters of color within the DC Universe. Uh, coming in with a nice metallic foil cover from DC Black Label. And Monstrous uh, Talk Stories number one, coming with a gold foil variant from Image Comics. These uh, will all be released for local comic shop day. And if you get in contact with your local comic shop, you can put a pre-order in for these on the FOC, just like the rest of the FOC entries. Yes, so a little bit bonus for you, not just the additional prints, but those local sh comic shop day variants, Local Comic Shop Day is great because guess what it does? It supports your local comic shop yes. and get those pre-orders in for that. Let your local comic shop know, hey, you want some of these? We just showed you the covers on the screen, but we also showed the rest of our picks. So make sure you get those pre-orders in through your LCS, through online, wherever you order, or blackcapecomics.com. This is Brian and Jack from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.